My name is Dr. Pierre Chu. I'm a professor of psychiatry at the University of Alberta in Edmonton, Canada. On behalf of my colleague, Dr. Justin Lalonde, and I, it is our pleasure to share with you the findings of our review on addressing the unmet needs of patients with persistent negative symptoms of schizophrenia, emerging pharmacological treatment options. Negative symptoms represent an impairment of normal human emotional responses, um, thought processes and behaviours. Typically they include symptoms such as affective blunting or flattening, um, anhedonia, um, asociality, um, alogia and amotivational apathy. Negative symptoms are prevalent and it's estimated that up to 60% of outpatients will demonstrate negative symptoms at any point in time. However, persistent and primary negative symptoms are estimated to occur in up to about 25% of patients with schizophrenia. Negative symptoms are associated with decreased quality of life, um, increased functional disability, increased burden of illness and poorer outcome overall. Unfortunately, negative symptoms respond less well to treatment, there are limited treatment options and no accepted standard of care. Part of this may be related to the complex neurobiology of negative symptoms uh, which build not only on the aspects of the uh, dopamine hypothesis um, underpinning positive symptoms but also dysfunction and disturbance of uh, GABA and uh, glutamate pathways. Negative symptoms are also difficult to assess and there are a number of new scales that are being developed that take into account uh, patients' inner experience as well as aspects of motivation. There are very few uh, randomized control studies that examine specifically patients with uh, prominent and persistent negative symptoms. Many of the studies have included uh, quite varied populations and used different scales, thus it's difficult to uh, be able to evaluate the results uh, given the potential confounds. Most of the existing treatments to date um, have included um, either um, second generation antipsychotics or the use of antidepressants in add-on therapy and there's quite an extensive literature concerning both of these. In terms of emerging treatment options, there are a number of different classes of agents that are being uh, actively researched. These include the NMDA receptor function enhancers, um, agents such as sarcosine or the glycine reuptake inhibitors such as betopertin. Then we have the class of uh, metabotropic uh, glutamatergic receptor activators, um, including the mglur 2 agents. The uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor agonists represent a, a very new class of agents um, that are add-on therapies. Finally, we have a variety of agents from a number of different classes, including the psychostimulants, um, N-acetylcysteine, um, neurosteroids, and 5-HT3 receptor antagonists. Many of the studies with these agents are relatively small-scale or open-label, and the large randomized control trials have unfortunately not replicated some of the findings of the earlier pilot studies. In terms of the future, the unmet need of patients with persistent negative symptoms of schizophrenia is unequivocal. Because of the complex neurobiology that underpins negative symptoms, overall progress has actually been quite limited. Even for the agents that we have uh, some positive data for, it is difficult to know what their role in therapy will be, um, i.e. are they primary agents, are they adjunctive treatments, um, are they to be used earlier or later in the course of the illness. There remain many questions in terms of the effective treatment of negative symptoms. Hopefully this review provides a useful clinical summary of the data to date and will guide clinicians in terms of the current choices available to them.